Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul and today we're taking a look at the Workhorse HD11 flashlight from Workhorse. However, I just gotta say that this has been sent over by them for review purposes. So thank you very much for Workhorse for that. And I do have to say that this has not been, you know, they haven't had any input into the decisions or outcomes I make. They've had no early access to the review and they've provided no financial compensation for the video's production. They've simply provided me with the light and just ask that I link to the light for purchase down in the description below. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our size comparison with the channel staples of 91 millimeter and a 58 millimeter Sousama knife. And jumping into the more flashlight relevant comparisons of a double A and a triple A. And we got a double ended girth comparison for you today as we do have a flared end. Yes, and that is a lot of emitters. This is an 18650 light, and this is what it looks like with an 18650 cell girth. And just to put this into perspective, let's put it up against some other workhorse lights. So this is the TD04, uh, the TS23. These are both 21700 lights, so bear that in mind. Girth of the girth girth. And it is a different form factor, but I think because um, it is a little different, it's probably going to be one of the more well known workhorses. This is the HD01. And jumping into a design overview. So, first of all, let's come around front and take a look at these emitters, as it is one of the more eye-catching things so we actually have three different sets of emitters we have a tear style throwing or spotlight that has a cooler temperature in the middle these yellower looking emitters are more of a neutral warmer tint and they are as a floodlight and then these three white emitters here are actually red emitters you can see that the other emitters besides the spotlight are behind kind of a frosted diffuser just to give it a more diffused floody pattern. The body itself has a little bit of jimping here and I would have normally called this um, heat fins. However, this light does this. So I'm going to say that this is additional jimping for this rotating head flashlight. It goes from your standard straightforward to a right angle light suitable for clipping onto a bag strap or using as a headlamp. And this does actually maintain light throughout the turn. And they, it, this is actually a smart turning mechanism as opposed to some other lights in the same genre. We'll get into that much later. And here we have a rubber button with a built-in LED indicator. Uh, this little bit of occlusion where it just it just encroaches on the LED portion, I'm assuming is just a manufacturing defect of my particular sample. Pocket clip-wise, we have a deep carry style clip, but it's never going to be deep carry in practice just because, you know, you're going to have this much of the light out. And even if you have it in the shorter operation, there's just no world in which this is actually going to be a deep carry light. Around back, we have a rubber boot covering our USB-C charging port. As far as rubber boots go, it is a little bit more difficult to get in, but that just gives you a little bit more confidence in the seal, although it is a little bit more of a pain in the butt. And this is IPX68 water resistant, so you can feel confident using this in wet conditions. Around back, we have a flat base, which means that it can confidently tail stand. It is also a magnet, so you can stick it to things as you like, which when combined with the turning head can be quite useful. One last note on the construction portion of things. This is actually a three piece light, as we have the rear contact and magnet. And then the body and head or driver and emitter are actually different. So I think this comes down to this being a generic part that's probably used in other models. I don't know any models off the top of my head that would use this particular part, but it's the only thing that makes this kind of construction make sense in my opinion. I don't think this is, you know, complex enough to warrant it not being part of a body for some reason. And this is kind of reaffirmed with my FC11C review sample, where the body is different. However, this is also a three-piece light. 
So I think just manufacturing individual body pieces and then a bunch of tail caps is just part of their manufacturing process. With that, let's just go ahead and jump on into the run times and brightnesses for the HD11. As always, I will leave this up so you can pause and read along if you would rather, but I will be reading it ahead. And just so that we're clear, we're going to have our brightnesses up here, but our actual run times is down here. So this is meters, not minutes. I definitely didn't record this video once reading the wrong line. <clears throat> so just to save a bit of time, I'll give you all the brightnesses at once. So spotlight, which is the middle one that we went through before, floodlight and combining, putting both of those on, all have a moonlight mode of one lumen. That runs for 420 hours on the spot, 370 on the floodlight, or combined 350 hours. They have a low mode of 10 lumens across the board as well, which gives you on the spotlight 100 hours, on the floodlight 60 hours, and on the combined flood spot 52. Medium is 300 on the spotlight, 100 on the floodlight and a combined 350 for spotlight four and a half hours floodlight 9.3 hours and combined spot flood three and a half high we jump up to 800 lumens for spotlight 300 for the floodlight and 900 for the combined mode for 3.8 hours on the spot 5.8 on the flood and 3.3 on the combined now on turbo mode, we don't have drop down times, but it will drop down due to thermal throttling and then battery decreasing, so just bear that in mind. On the spotlight, we have a turbo of 1700 for three hours. Again, that will drop down after a minute or two. On the floodlight, 600 lumens for two and a half, and on the combined, 1800 for 2.8. The red light, which is in always on or flashing mode, has six lumens for the brightness and a runtime of 18 or 36 hours. And again, this is IP68 with an impact resistance of one meter. Now onto the UI of the Workos HD11. Now I may have mentioned before that this is actually a smart turning mechanism. You can actually hear the detent. And what that means basically is the intent for this light is that when you're using it in the forward facing mode, you're most likely going to be using the thrower and when you're using it in the right angle you're most likely going to want to use the flood and so this actually will intelligently switch depending on what orientation you're in so just to show you if you're on straight and you just turn the light on you have that let's see if we can there we go you just have that central emitter but then if you turn it on when it's bent like this then you have those flood leds and this will actually dynamically change, as you can see here, as you rotate the light. But you do also have the option of changing with the UI itself. You don't have to just bend to change the emitters. So with that in mind, let's go through the UI from off first. One click will take you onto whatever emitter you are you know, orientated for. If you press and hold, you're going to get the moonlight mode. And again, this is the same across both. That is very, very low. Two clicks is going to throw you into turbo mode. Three clicks is going to throw you into red light. Let's see if you get a good look at that. Whilst you're in red light, holding will go to flashing. And then holding will just take you back. Once the light is on, you're just going to hold to cycle through. And whereas you double clicked from off to go to turbo, turbo is now just part of the cycle. So let's go from moonlight mode, low, medium, high, turbo. And we do have mode memory. And then whilst the light is on, if you do a double click, you will then change the emitter. So let's see if we can get that nice and focused as I drag the manual around. So double click, change to this, double click again. You can see we then have all of the emitters on at the same time. And you can do that no matter how it's orientated. So you can have it here and it will just have the floodlights on normally. But if you double click, you can have all of them, just the thrower. You have a lot of control, a lot of versatility there. And then if you triple click, you will then go into red light mode, 
hold, red flashing. And then from off, you can also four clicks to go into the digital lockout. Same again to unlock, but you can also just lock out with a partial turn. And I can't see anything in the UI and I haven't been able to see anything about a uh, strobe mode. The closest you're going to get is the red flashing mode. So just bear that in mind if a strobe mode is something that you normally look for in a light. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at the pros of the Workhorse HD11. Now, I, I think the, the win, the pro for this is very easily the versatility. Not just in the sheer number of emitters you have here, which gives you a lot of coverage across different tints, brightnesses, beam patterns, but you also have the option of throwing it into the right angle version, magnetizing it to something, clipping it to something. There is a lot of versatility here, and it is an intelligent light, as we went through before with the switching. Now, this rotating head is not new. It is not something that Workos made, and it, there are certainly cheaper versions available. This is the Nikron N7, which I have owned since, I think, 2019, maybe 2018. And this is a AA or 14500 that does the exact same thing. However, this is not intelligent. This has no other emitters. This has nothing to change. It's just a simple rotating head with a constant connection. So the fact that they have all those extra emitters and that they have the intelligence in here to switch between them is very cool, very flexible, and very intuitive. And then the flexibility to have all of the white emitters on at the same time is absolutely excellent. USB-C recharging is great. The you know the flat base the machining is very well done. It has a nice matte texture to it. It feels great in hand. Obviously, we have a slight manufacturing defect that's just purely cosmetic with the button here. But again, that's just going to be par for the course with any mass-produced goods, especially with something like mold injection. So that's nothing to really you know complain about. I'm just pointing it out just because it's very clearly a flaw. Now. Jumping into um, one more thing on the pros, I think that for all you get here, which does include the cell, it's 3000 million power 18650, I do think the price is very reasonable. This comes in at about £50, all like full price, but there's a permanent coupon to get that for 40 or less. And if you're happy using sites like AliExpress and whatnot, you can get it directly shipped from China for considerably less if you're happy to accept the shipping risk and the shipping delay in that. Now, onto the cons. I'm not a big fan of the ergonomic situation here. This is a rather large clip that is kind of just mounted mid-body. So it's kind of just always there. Like, the best I've found is to just put it to the back, try and put a finger into the bend, and just try and use it that way. Just bear in mind that the, it will block the boot, and you will have to rotate it, which will, over time, lead to scratches. Very minor thing, just something to bear in mind. Something that is a little more substantial and kind of amusing, but also annoying. This is a three-piece design as we went over, and that is fine. That is completely fine. However, you see? Just one more time. So when you rotate to 90 degrees, nothing happened because you're going clockwise. When you rotate back counterclockwise, it is very easy to then like partial turn and break connection with this topmost piece. Now, practically speaking, it's a little annoying, but if you were content that you were happy with this light, you weren't going to return or anything, you could just slap some blue Loctite on this top threading since you still have access to the battery back here. But that is a bit of a flaw in my opinion. Now, if you are aware of it, which you should be pretty quickly, and you can remember to, you can, of course, just hold it up here so that that's not going to be a problem. But obviously, if your grip just falls down here, which my intended to do for a lot of the time owning this, you are going to accidentally do that. Um, one other thing that is a bit lackluster about this light, unfortunately, is... One, two, three, there we go. Is the red light. Now, I love the addition of red light. And if if you want to have a in-depth look of the beam patterns, there is a card up here that will show you the beam shots. However, the red light for this, I'll try and turn some lights off so you can see, is very problematic in use. So up close, 
uh, we're right underneath the camera basically we have this nice hot spot it's fine and you ha can see these basically fins right three fins however the moment you really get out the light becomes really diffuse and then you just get these three hot spot fins which means that practically speaking the red light mode which does not have variable brightness is only practical in up close scenarios like this which map reading stuff like that that's fine or very sh like pointed directly at your feet you cannot comfortably use this at short medium medium or long distance whatsoever just because not ignoring brightness the beam pattern just completely disintegrates like this and that is purely a design error on the reflector um, or how they're arranged you can see they are very spread out and then they just kind of get kicked out i assume by this metal ring i'm assuming that's probably what's doing it but that does greatly decrease the effectiveness the usability of red which is a shame again it's it's better in there than not i can only see you getting maybe either dead space or more of the floodlight leds otherwise and i think the red does add value i just think that it could be done better overall i think that this is a worthwhile light i think its identity is a little anchored in the versatility aspect to it and I haven't seen if this is available separately, but at least in the box, there is no headband for it. Now, other workhorse headbands may fit it. They may be on specifically for it. I'm not sure. However, if you're going to sell a light that is going to specialize in doing this, and it is one that, you know, kind of warrants going on a hat or a helmet, whatever, I think it would have benefited greatly from having a head strap in. And it would have benefited from just a, a different adjustment to the red light. But in terms of beam performance on the flood, on the throw, the UI, the usability, overall, I'm very happy with this. I think it could just use a couple of tweaks here and there in the body design and the red. And I think this would be an excellent option. But if you're interested in the features of this light, I don't think you can go wrong, just as long as you bear in mind those drawbacks. But that's just what I think. What do you think of the HD11? Let me know in the comment section down below. Whilst you're down there, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly, please consider our Patreon or a YouTube membership. That's been me. I've been Paul, and I hope you, yeah, you, have a wonderful rest of your day.